Welcome to the Mirror Talks podcast, where we deconstruct some of humanity's most disconnecting and limiting assumptions and offer an alternative, a free state of consciousness, unbiased, naturally wise, and genuinely loving. We will shed a more enlightened perspective on everyday experiences to help anyone willing realize their true potential and inspire a contemporary spiritual life lift in service to all. Say goodbye to the man-made paradigms of distorted ideas. Let's become pure, free, and actually intelligent once again. Welcome, everyone, to the Mirror Talks podcast with Bentinho Massaro. I'm Corey Katuna. I'll be briefly introducing each episode, and I'll also be one of the familiar faces on the podcast, which, by the way, has been fully video recorded. So if you're listening right now on an audio platform, you can also hop over to YouTube or to bentinomassaro.tv to watch these episodes in full. So just a little disclaimer, this podcast is probably going to be a bit different than what you're used to when it comes to podcasts in that it's not just informational or educational. It's actually more of a paradigm shift. Actually, be more accurate to say that it's a release of whatever paradigm you're used to. So if you're new to this, if you're new to material that points you in this direction, there's a good chance that this is going to feel like learning a new language. Although I can confidently say that Bentinho has never made his teachings clearer or more accessible than he has for this podcast. But still... I recommend that you give yourself a few episodes at least just to get oriented and familiar if this does feel totally new for you. It's worth it. So I'm super excited about this project because you get to see Ventinho in rare form. Usually when he's teaching, it's a retreat setting and it's relatively advanced spiritual topics and he's speaking to people who he knows have been following his work. But here, he wanted to bring it all the way down to earth, so to speak. And bring that enlightened perspective to everyday topics like relationships and leadership and health and politics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I just think that is so rare and so lucky. And it's such an opportunity if we can be receptive and humble enough to listen and lean in and receive what's being shared. So anyway, I can't wait. And on that note, I will let you begin the episode. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Mirror Talks. This podcast has been in the works for a little while. The intention has been brewing. Um, first of all, I'm here with uh, two lovely friends, Corey Katuna, who most of you will probably know by now if you've been following my work for a while. Um, we've been good friends for about five years. We met in Colorado during one of my um, weekly sessions there. And um, she's been a loyal friend ever since. Uh, She's worked with me on and off. She's worked on some of the projects, some of the design work. And overall, she's just been an amazing friend. So uh, she'll be with us here during quite a few of the episodes. And one of her qualities, I suppose, or um, almost like a niche, I, I suppose, is to translate, and you can put this in your own words, but... I'll give people a short introduction, is to translate my work, which can get quite nuanced and subtle and advanced and kind of out there for mainstream uh, consciousness. So a lot of people don't, early on in their exposure to my work, they don't really understand what I'm talking about with some of the things I'm saying. As a result, I might seem controversial, um, or it may just sound like something someone would want to understand, but they don't understand it. Or they may have some resistance to it because it seems weird or or just something that's difficult to grok. So she's uh, got a great knack for kind of relating this to a more mainstream mindset, if you will. So that's uh, one of her strengths. And I think that's what it will be a big part of what she contributes to this uh, podcast throughout. So Corey, maybe say a few words as to um, like, what's your intention for being part of these podcasts? Yeah, I would say my one of my greatest passions is these teachings, just what I've gotten out of um, being around you and learning from you and being friends with you. And 
and yeah, it is one of my greatest passions to have as many people understand this on, on a accessible mainstream, not elusive, not so far out there, not so um, like this type of spiritual work only applies to people who have devoted their entire lives to it kind of way. Like, no, this is accessible to anyone. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And you feel that will be your angle also throughout the series? Yeah, I think I can't help it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's nice for you to kind of represent that audience. Because I mean, I can, I can continue to talk about the topics that I talk about, but I think um, it's very helpful for something like this podcast to have your participation kind of represent that audience that you're so familiar with, and that you have sort of, um, I suppose, passion or love or allegiance for. Mm. So that's great. I think Perfect. that'll be awesome. Nice. And to my left, we have Kelly Roderick, another really dear friend. Um, we met about six months ago. And I immediately took a liking to something about her, which reminded me, um, sounds a little vain, but <laughs> reminded me of something <laughs> about myself. Like I recognized a, a quality that I typically call, and I'll explain this as we kind of move through these episodes, it'll become clear what I mean by it. But there was sort of this natural openness and maturity or inclination towards what I call mirror consciousness. Um, I saw a lot of sort of selfless ability to reflect the people that she was interacting with. And um, anyway, we've become great friends uh, right away. And um, she is, I, I would say her niche here in these sessions will be uh, similar to Corey's to kind of bridge some of this information, try to drag some, some clarifications out of me. But in a way, she'll probably be addressing more of the, um, which is a perfect balance, actually, the more uh, seasoned adepts, the more seasoned students who have been uh, engaged in my work for quite some time, who are working with the more subtle nuances of the path and the teachings. Um, and her questions just naturally seem to often go in that direction after you really kind of already embodied a lot of the work and it's the subtle type of questions. So not that Corey never asked those questions, but uh, I think Kelly has just a natural inclination towards that. And I think she'll be representing therefore the audience that is already familiar with the work and that wants to kind of go deeper and know how some of those subtle nuances work for me and how I would explain these. So in that sense, we have, um, I, I really like this sort of tripod of people. And I think it'll be the main uh, group, we will have different people from time to time, I'm sure. But I think Corey and Kelly will be the main sort of representatives of the audience in terms of the questions they ask and the interactions that they provide me with, and the way that they prompt me for content, where Corey predominantly, of course, it's not black or white, but uh, predominantly will be representing kind of her group of friends and, and the culture that she comes from and sort of that more mainstream um, entrepreneurial millennial perspective. And I think overall, predominantly, again, not black or white, but predominantly, I think you'll find that Kelly will represent the people that have been following my work for quite some time. They've been maybe doing some of the courses like the Shepherding Consciousness uh, program, the next level, those types of courses where we dive much deeper into the really subtle layers, the more advanced layers of the teaching. So I love this because this way, in addition to just myself, we have two representatives of, because um, I kind of wanted to be 50-50 this podcast, I wanted to appeal to or, or introduce this type of message to mainstream, a mainstream that is open minded, I should say. So I mean, we're not here to uh, try to appeal to the masses in terms of like just about everybody because uh, that would mean we have to make too many concessions on the message and on the way that the message naturally flows through us. So that's not the intention, but we do want to make it as accessible as we possibly can, as user friendly as we possibly can, so that everyone who has an open mind and open heart can fully sort of fall into this material and see the benefits that it has for them. And see that this message really is about them. It's not about a philosophy. It's not about a religion. It's not about a cult. It's not about a creed. It's not about 
a particular subgroup of people. Um, this really is something that's innate to all of us. And we just want to convey the benefit that it has brought us and demonstrate this through our message and mm -hmm. through how we interact with certain topics that you guys may be dealing with and challenged by. And therefore, again, sort of to have this 50-50 balance where the more beginner's mindset when it comes to this material, the more, I'll just call it mainstream consciousness, is represented and the teachings are clarified for them, the instructions, the invitation is clarified for them, the possibility that we promote for them is clarified to them in a way that they can digest and understand. And then there's also the other 50%, approximately, where we'll be delving into the subtler, more nuanced, more advanced layers of this type of message, and for lack of a better word, lifestyle, if you will, it's a way of living, it's a way of being. As some of the later stages of sort of challenges and balances that one gets to interact with, um, that Kelly is an excellent candidate to represent just naturally through a question. So welcome both of you guys. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, what do you feel? Do you have a particular intention for being part of this podcast? I think I understand what you share and what you teach on a really subtle level, but also in a way that I, I see it very simply as well. And I can see I would like to bridge some of your understandings on, on a more advanced level, but also on a more simple level. Um, mm, cool. Because the advanced stuff isn't actually that complicated. If you look mm -hmm. at it from a, a clear perspective, it can be really simplified. And I would like to bridge it in a way that does feel more accessible, but also allows you to go those into those later stages, but with a lot more fluidity and clarity. Great. Yeah, I think that's clear. This is cool. This gets me excited for the audience, actually. Mm -hmm. It's this combo. Nice. So I suppose a good way to start off this first episode is to clarify as deeply and as simply as I can my intention for doing this podcast. What I, What's the feeling behind it? What motivates me? to talk right now, what motivates me to arrange for all this stuff, the studio, um, all that. So a good way to start off this first episode is probably for me to just clarify as deeply and simply as I can the intention for this podcast. Like what's the feeling behind it? What's the motivation behind it? Why do I feel called to not just offer my teachings, but offered in this particular format of the podcast, of the dialogues, of addressing sort of um, people's particular questions and themes and struggles and their worth worldly types of issues and, and uh, movements that we're seeing happening in the world and stuff. And basically, I cannot, I cannot introduce this intention without making some sort of a claim that kind of comes off as a bit arrogant. But it's the truth from which I operate. And it's the truth from which these podcasts are hosted. And so without that foundation, I mean, I can uh, beat around the bush, but I have a message, I have a reason for sharing that message. And um, I think the only way to address that is to make the claim that where I come from is different than where most people come from. So let me kind of start with that. First of all, the title mirror talks. Um, I consider myself a being who is for the most part rooted in what I my teachings call mirror consciousness. This is a state of consciousness that is um, not just a human personality anymore. It's not just a human state of consciousness. It's not what most people know. Um, it goes far beyond the extent of what most people have access to under day to day living experience, unless perhaps, you know, they experiment with psychedelics or stuff like that, which I don't promote, by the way, but um, just as an example that the state of consciousness that I have access to, although it is accessible, and it is innate to everyone, and therefore, it's not special in me, it is rare that someone accesses it to the extent that I and some others do because it requires practice, it requires devotion, it requires deep understanding, it requires um, a gutting out, like a, an emptying out of the ego construct. 
a relentless self-investigative process, a relentless self-deconstruction process. That to the degree that I've done that is simply not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But the results of doing that, the results of such a process, the results of such relentless inner work is now what is available through me and to me. And so from that state of consciousness, for lack of a better word, which I call the mirror state, or the mirror being, everything else is different. Everything else is seen from a different light. Everything else is approached from a completely different motivation and state of consciousness than is common to this world. And so it is my intention to share at least a glimpse of that, to demonstrate a glimpse of that, to exemplify through dialogue, which is sort of the best that I can do in this format with audio and video and the internet, and not having, um, without personal interaction with people, is to demonstrate a glimpse, a portion, uh, some of the expressions of or results of this mirror state consciousness for several reasons. Um, one is, as a representation of what's possible for the human mind, if you will, or the human spirit to develop or reach or attain or realize within themselves. And again, it sounds like I'm making a claim of being different. And in a sense, I am, I'm okay with stating that. Um, I'm not essentially different. I'm not special. But I am rare, if you were to compare all the human beings, all seven and a half billion human beings on this planet, there's not that many that have done uh, the type of work that I've done, to the extent that I've done it, um, and that have attained the result through that work that I have attained. So there are others, there are others, I'm not saying I'm special, again, it's not my intention to convey that. But again, to make clear where I'm coming from, I feel I have to sort of make a statement, a clear claim of where I'm coming from. And Again, I call this particular state mirror consciousness. And the idea of mirror consciousness, like what is mirror consciousness? Um, it's really a state of consciousness that to kind of jump straight to the point, it is a state of consciousness that is very transparent to what you could call the God state of consciousness or universal consciousness or the great universal I am, the essence, the oneness of all that is. You could call it a state of oneness, a state of oneness consciousness, where there is a, a felt, an experiential, a deep understanding, a knowingness, a recognition of the one infinite creator, of the one infinite unity of all things. And if a person dissolves its personal layers, its personal biases, its personal preferences, its personal thoughts, if it investigates all that, if it in the proper way deconstructs the material of the personality, the personality construct, all the filters, all the assumptions, all the beliefs that we've gathered around our consciousness, and that has turned us into this um, self identified little human being, with all the limitations and all the suffering and all the confusion and all the ignorance and all the doubts and all the insecurity and all the paradoxes and all the polarities and all the war and all the conflict that that generates. Basically, what's responsible for the state of the world as we see it today, is a lack of mirror consciousness, or you could say, it's the addition onto the natural state of all beings, which is that mirror consciousness, which is that pure, undefined, undifferentiated unity consciousness. And onto that, we have added tons and tons of filters of assumptions and social conditioning and personal conditioning and mental emotional conditioning and uh, desire for safety and security, because we've identified with the physical body, and we've identified with the personal mind inside the physical body, and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of layers that typically generates what I call person consciousness. I have in my teachings, I describe person consciousness, then beyond that is shepherding consciousness, beyond that is mirroring consciousness, and then beyond that is a gateway consciousness or the gateway. Now, I won't get into that right now, but just for the overview. So most people are in a state of perpetual person consciousness, personhood. They are in a state of consciousness, which is completely inundated with and encapsulated by a string of uh, near endless layers of thought and assumption and belief and conditioning and fears and pain and emotion, to the degree where 
The world mm. that they think they're perceiving is nothing but the projection of their own imagination, their own distorted imagination. It's a projection of their beliefs. It's a projection of their thoughts. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are, right? Kind right. of a famous statement. I very much agree with that statement. And that is the result of a lack of purity with which the purity with which we investigate ourselves. Typically, people's quest for self inquiry, for self realization, for self discovery, doesn't go beyond the conceptual realm. From time to time, we ask ourselves, who are we? Why are we here? We kind of wonder, we ponder, we may have sort of a intuitive download or two. Um, we may experiment with meditation a little bit, but we never really get, for the most part, people never really get to a profound identity state change that is possible, which is what I'm claiming I have or am. And so from that state, I can say that I see the world very differently than I used to. I s interact with the world in a very different way than I used to. I interact with people in a very different way than I used to. I interact with whatever you could call myself, like my own body and my own mind in a very different way than I used to and than most people do. Now, from this state of oneness, consciousness, unity, consciousness, from the mirror state, there is uh, an inescapable, in inevitable, natural compassion that's just intrinsic to that. And it's not that illogical, if you understand that it is a state of oneness, consciousness, an understanding of the unity of all things. So if I am truly experientially recognizing the unity of all things, from a clear state of consciousness. So that intrinsic compassion or love is not so illogical if you can kind of imagine this mirror state consciousness as truly being a state of mind, and it's not a state of mind, but a state of consciousness, a state of being, wherein the entity that is in that state of consciousness, or that is that state of consciousness, recognizes the oneness, the inseparability of all things. So if you imagine deeply feeling and recognizing that everything that you experience is part of your own body, almost, it's part of your own expression, it's part of your own self, it is your own self appearing, it's your own self that is, you could call it manifest, but in the later stages of this deconstruction work, you realize that manifestation is an illusion. But nevertheless, there is the appearance of experiences, perceptions, and all that sometimes I call the grand illusion. And if one in interacts with, let's just say the world for now, or creation in that way, where that oneness is so clearly recognized, then it's not hard to imagine that the natural response that comes through such a body mind that is plugged into the motherboard of all that is, is a response of love, is a response of natural care. Um, and so the desire that comes forth is to make available this information, to make available this state of consciousness, to exemplify it, to be it, to demonstrate it, and to share potential pathways and methodologies into it, sort of as an invitation from what I perceive to be one's true self, to one's true self, through this body mind to other body minds. And so from this state, uh, one gets a very interesting perspective on the things that are, for example, currently happening in the world. Um, this sort of uh, the great awakening, as they call it, and all the events that come with that all the challenges and the struggles and the confusions and the exposures that are happening right now. And also, from the state of consciousness, how we interact and deal with and understand our own mental emotional bodies is very different than how a person who is bound to person consciousness to the bubble of their own thoughts and emotions and ideas and belief systems, and that have mm -hmm. that hasn't made that bubble transparent that hasn't cleared out their inner landscape, um, whose mirror has become super wobbly or distorted, if you will, or personalized. Uh, the way that a person approaches their thoughts, their emotions, their beliefs and the world that they seem to interact with is vastly different at a profound level from the way that someone in the later stages of shepherding consciousness or mirror consciousness interacts with 
the way that a mirror interacts with the world and the perceptions is very different. Um, in fact, you could even say that it's not interacting with anything. Because one is not perceiving things to be other than itself. So yes, there is the illusion of interaction, like I'm speaking right now to Corey, I'm speaking right now to Kelly, I'm speaking right now to the audience. So there is the appearance of the interaction that's occurring. But within my own view, if you will, like what I experience, it's not that there is any interaction with another happening. It's not that there's an interaction with something outside myself happening. It's just that this is, this is appearing because this is what spontaneously appears. One of the hallmarks of mere consciousness also is a spontaneity. It's a it's like your refresh rate goes through the roof, so to speak, where humans have a very slow refresh rate, where the mm. person consciousness has a very slow refresh rate, because it's carrying with it all this data, all this memory, all this attachment, all this identification, all these ideas and concepts, <laughs> through which all of his life force has to now try to find a way out and navigate and interact with the symbolized world that we've created for ourselves. The mirror, um, is clear of that. And because it is clear of that, it responds to the moment as a mirror does without bias, without distortion, or at least I'll say without very little bias. Because even me talking here is still a bias or distortion towards the availability or, or passion or seeing some degree of benefit in sharing this message. Mm -hmm. So there's always, as long as we're interacting, as long as we're talking, if you will, there's always to some extent, one could say, um, the existence of a bias towards something, there's always the distortion towards something. However, uh, it is just a vastly different state of consciousness than what the typical person consciousness experiences. And the benefits, the clarity, the skillfulness, the balance, the spontaneity, the refresh rate, the intelligence that becomes available to an entity that becomes the mirror state, or anything even closer to it than what it's used to at present, even if it has a percentage of this, as compared to no percentage of this, or 1% of it, if it bumps that up to 10% of it, if it, if it clears out the closet by 10%, it will already increase its refresh rate, its ability to channel true intelligence, a true balanced view, a true balanced, truly compassionate, truly loving approach that is based in true unity understanding, true unity consciousness, which is the truth of existence, in my experience. And um, so the foundation of all this really is the fact that all is one, that one is the all and that right now, through this body mind, the I is interacting with itself, the one infinite creator, as I call it sometimes, is interacting with itself, it's experiencing itself, it's giving shape and form and sound to itself, it's listening to itself, and uh, it has the total free will in all of its distinct expressions, even though they're not ultimately separate, but they're unique expressions of that inseparability, each of which has the spark of free will, the original law of free will, if you will, to decide as to what it wants to believe, what it wants to choose, what it wants to do, how it wants to act, what it wants to assert, and so forth. So to me, this is kind of almost like a silly a game like a cosmic joke. But nevertheless, there's a heartfelt natural desire that doesn't feel personal. Uh, doesn't feel like it's motivated from anything personal, it just happens. And so this has been kind of urging me to create this podcast environment, so that we can get these thoughts out that represent or these behaviors that represent or these examinations or these investigations, these clarifications that represent how the deepest part of ourselves interacts with the world that we interact with. And to give a glimpse of that and to give some um, methods and instructions as to how people can access this for themselves and enjoy these benefits. So I mean, some have called this enlightenment, um, nirvana, call it as you will, the result of clearing out your biases is bliss. It is unconditional love. It is unity awareness, it is liberation from one's own thoughts and emotions from one's own beliefs. 
It is a, a greatly enhanced clarity and perceptiveness of every moment of one's life. It is greatly increasing one's capacity to notice all the subtleties that just kind of fly under the radar for most people because they're too grossly oriented, too object oriented. And they're missing out on this super rich and intelligent realm of consciousness that's much subtler than what's obvious for most people. And I feel it is interesting to at least a percentage of the population to try to get a taste for, uh, to witness someone that claims to be in that state and raise certain questions, raise certain topics. How would you interact with this? How would you see this? How would you deconstruct this illusion? How would you deconstruct this belief system? So that people can get a flavor for it. Cool. And it uh, can be sort of a transmission of this state. Mm -hmm. A copy of this state can be sort of uploaded, if you will, and people mm -hmm. can download it to whatever degree they choose to sort of unzip that package of data, that transmission, and begin to apply this and begin to um, emulate this in their own lives and experience in their own way, how this can completely transform their relationship to themselves into one that's much more blissful, uh, much more loving, much mm -hmm. more understanding, much more clear and free of paradoxes and polarities and distortions and all that. So it's an offer from a clear consciousness imbued with an unconditional love, a universal type of love for all of itself that wishes to demonstrate, give an example, give a glimpse through the vehicle that it has available in this particular space-time incarnation on this planet at this stage with this technology. This is where this particular body finds itself to be. This is the timeline. Here's what's relevant. There's a lot of people out there that are seeking for a new way of being. They're seeking for another way of understanding themselves. They've always been seeking, but they're seeking for justice. They're seeking for equality. They're seeking for this. They're seeking for what's right and wrong. They're seeking for morals. They're seeking mm. for fairness. They're seek We're seeking for all these things. They're seeking for wealth. They're seeking for success, for popularity, for making it on their own. They're seeking to be entrepreneurs. They're seeking to escape the rat race. They're Whatever it is, people are always seeking for greater happiness and fulfillment, fulfillment of their potential, realization of their potential. But there's not a whole lot of clear information available to mainstream that provides in clear terms an alternate way and describes where that's leading also to what degree someone can take on that journey if they want to. And um, I don't need for people to take it to any particular degree. Um, it's entirely up to them as to how much of this they wish to take on. And my suggestion is they try it out <laughs> and they give it a chance and they just feel into it, feel into where this body mind is expressing itself from through examples, through clarifications, through deconstructing some of these concepts and see if it resonates, see if um, people find there's some intelligence behind it that seems to be different maybe. So be open-minded, I would suggest because some of the ways are different than what you find out there. Um, some of the beliefs or views that one can come to, understandings rather, are different. And not everyone in society would condone that or like that as being, or promote that as being a, a popular opinion or a popular view. Mm -hmm. But I will try to back up as much as I can why I would promote such a view or such an approach to how to view things or how to deconstruct an existing view and transform it into what I would say is a broader view, a more expanded view, a clear view, a more unbiased view. And then why, like, what's the benefit of that? And I believe it's self-explanatory after a while, and it will just demonstrate its own clarity. But uh, of course, it needs some open-mindedness and uh, not to get offended too easily to not get too defensive of one's own point of view, which is the whole cause of all the problems we're finding between humans in the world today anyway. So it's also a message of peace, how to establish nice. peace mm -hmm. on all levels of human civilization, individual, interpersonal, family, community, nation, global, uh, who knows, beyond global. So it is also a message of peace, how to accomplish peace. And I see a lot of people oppose the way to get to peace, uh, mm -hmm. because they're so insistent upon the way that they identify with their views and with yeah. their personhood. And that needs to be deconstructed. 
that needs to be understood from a clear way, from a clear state of consciousness, from a mirror type of state of consciousness, needs to be reflected back to us what it is we're doing and why we're so insistent upon it and why we're so attached to it and how it's not working and how it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. So that then maybe we're open to a change that can actually lead to a different outcome. Do the questioners, do the viewers have any questions, do you feel? Anything they want to know at this stage? Well, I think there's, for people who are pretty new, a good amount of that is going to go over their heads. But what I would recommend, and what I did in the beginning, because I'm totally one of the people that came with, with an empowerment. I mean, I was attracted to Bentinho's work originally because of the empowerment aspect of it. And then it wasn't until like two years later that he dropped this bomb of enlightenment and self-realization and like, you know, where this path can go that I was like, holy shit, I never would have gotten on board with that if I didn't get this, this long on-ramp in a way where it was made accessible to me. So what I would encourage for folks as they're listening to this, if it's going over your head, is to just let your intuition piece it together. Like let your intuition do the heavy lifting. Um, if it's not making sense to your mind right away, because just listen to like five episodes and you'll, it'll start to piece itself together. You'll start to get the language. You'll start to get the roadmap. So that's just some, a little piece of advice if it's going over your head right now. Nice. Yeah. Ultimately this is instinctive. This is natural. This is spontaneous. This is intuitive and a convoluted, biased, cultivated, conditioned mind. Uh, so many layers and so many resistances and so many, taboos and so many preferences that it's hard sometimes to to hear to even have the attention span throughout all that sort of messiness that's been put into our minds ultimately by our own agreement but as a sort of a natural part of uh, growing up on this planet we are socially conditioned like to the brim like mm. every moment subliminally energetically electromagnetically psychologically Mm. Uh, we're hypnotized by our environment all the time. To step out of that hypnosis and to truly become a free thinker, first of all, be, you know, and beyond that, there's a truly free being, which is free even from thinking. But um, yes, it does require sort of a trusting of one's intuition, just kind of listen, absorb, receive, be in a receptive mode as much as you can, like put your conventional conditioning nice. Um, kind of on the back burner, just soften it a little bit, soften your resistances, soften the things you don't understand. And don't try to intellectually get everything right now, because again, this is the result of, uh, for me, 20 years of relentless minute to minute investigative work. So also sometimes um, I have to be reminded where people are actually at and what it's like to experience mm -hmm. the world in the way that they do, which is also why I think it's good to have multiple people represent our audience and ask on their behalf. And we'll engage the community in different ways through social media and stuff to kind of get their input also more directly. But so yes, if for me, the things that I share for me are distilled, they're stepped down, I think I'm making it accessible, but then I still hear sometimes that people don't get it, they don't understand it. Like, what are you talking about? It's kind of funny like this. Uh, this dude made this video of me. That's just, you know, outrageous and like, <laughs> over the top and dramatic and like painting me as a total douchebag. Um, <laughs> I have to admit the clips he chose, I do a pretty good job <laughs> representing myself as a douchebag, but of course, all taken out of context and so on and so forth. Okay. But anyway, so a whole bunch of um, like I would call them really sort of mainstream people that are really caught up in the matrix, no offense, but it's just how I see it, would then bombard my page and like leave nasty comments and stuff like this. But then what I noticed a lot was some people were commenting, what are you talking about? Like just <laughs> so blatantly there would be a post, it'd be like a long post of mine, a clear sort of instruction or explanation of some of these views. And uh, there was just, hmm. Point 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 zero point zero zero one percent that would get through if that and there's just this what I don't even get, it's like a different language for people it's like mm -hmm. a, not a single word of that text 
lands. Like, I don't understand what you're saying, <laughs> right? And I th- here I am thinking I'm being really clear and, uh, <laughs> and articulate and trying to distill things. So yes, absolutely. If you don't get most of what, it, what I just shared even, then just, uh, I would say Corey's advice is solid. Uh, also come based in our own experience. Just sort of sit in, be in a receptive mode if you can, and try to get sort of the energy from which it comes and the state of consciousness from which it comes and be open to that. And the more you hear it, the more it's just like with any learning a new language, it really quite is like that. It kind of is like that. Mm -hmm. So just sit in, listen to this language, listen to this understanding. If it resonates, of course, if it doesn't, bye bye. Love you very much. <laughs> nice. um, don't do this to yourself because it's not always a fun process to deconstruct your ideas. So you got to be ready for it. You got to. You need to have suffered enough at the hands of your own points of view to be willing to examine your own points of view and not just think that the way that you think is the way that it is. There's got to be an openness there. There's got to be a crack in the ceiling of one's own personal conditioning. Mm. But assuming that most of the people that landed on this video. And that even got this far into the session are open to that and are seeking for that. But you don't quite understand the languaging of what I'm sharing, or where I'm coming from, what it is that I'm pointing to. Uh, just relax, like don't worry about it. Let it be intuitive. Um, it will start to make sense as you get used to the language, as you'll get a feel for where we're coming from, as we'll sort of uh, in the next few episodes address some more of the topics in the next two episodes or so. I'll explain a little bit more of the whole journey, like what's possible, what the journey kind of looks like on average, or like sort of in a universal way as much as possible, generalizing. Um, just to give people a flavor of the philosophical side to this or the teaching aspect of this. At the core of it, I just want to uh, transmit the possibility from this state, like what it looks like when it meets the world, what it looks like when it meets these worldly topics and challenges. Um, but a powerful component to delivering that and giving people a structure to attain that for themselves if they're interested is a teaching, its methodologies, it is certain views and philosophies, certain ways of seeing life that can be kind of the crutches to get to the truly unbiased state, the truly free state of consciousness, our original state of total freedom, total clarity, total natural spontaneous intelligence, total bias free living. So I want to convey both what's possible and kind of how I've learned to structure this in a way that it becomes then digestible for people to take these steps, which is what I'll lay out more and explain in the next two sessions or so. So yeah, give it give it three, four sessions if you're curious and interested, but you're not quite getting the languaging and you don't quite understand what I'm talking about. I think that's solid advice. So I think it's helpful to remember that this is not about I was teaching you how to do this, or I was telling you how things need to be, or you adopting this view or this philosophy. It's about us facilitating a process for you to unbecome everything that you're not, everything you've taken on, everything that is holding you back, and becoming more free of all that so that you can have access to who you truly are. So if you remember that it's about you accessing your true self and your true potential. And this is just a gateway for that. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I love the word unbecoming, like everything that you're not, like everything that we've taken on. Mm -hmm. It's not about something new. It's not about, um, here's a fun concept, or here's a cool philosophy, you should really like believe in this philosophy. It's not about taking on a new belief system. It really is an invitation for people to realize what they already are. Mm -hmm. And, and it's more a process of unlearning and unbiasing ourselves and unbecoming the conditioning so that what we truly are can shine forth and can make itself known. Like energetically, we can begin to feel who we are, know who we are, recognize who we are without having to go through all the, the whole maelstrom of thoughts and, and emotions and ideas and beliefs and opposition and all that stuff. Lovely. I love that. Yes. It is about unbecoming what mm-hmm. we are not. And therefore, it's a universal thing. It's not us giving something to them that they should then take on or adopt. It really is an individual, independent process in that way, which is the beauty of this. And uh, the, where the passion for sharing it comes from, it's like a candle that burns brightly, just wants to light other candles that aren't burning as brightly, when it notices that pain of not burning it as brightly, 
when it sees that it can burn as brightly. Um, so the, the brighter we know ourselves, the clearer we know ourselves at a deeper level, naturally, the more deeply we know others, also, the more we see through their BS and their layers of conditioning. And we see that while they're running around this bubble of thoughts and conditioning, um, there's this like, absolutely cool center to their being, which is timeless and eternal and radiant. And like, it's just begging, begging to be heard and to be known. And it's just a silent whisper for most people that is so hard to catch because of all the stuff in our minds. And um, it's just a desire for this brightness to spread all over this planet like COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I do feel everyone has this desire to know themselves, but it's like, it's like we're born with it and it's there and it drives us, but we don't understand what we're actually searching for. So we, it nice. gets externalized into everything we think we want to achieve, everything we think is going to make us happy. Nice. Basically how we're educated, like we're educated to get a job, get married, blah, blah, blah. And we think it's those things that are the answer to what we feel inside we're searching for. But it is truly ourselves that we're searching for. And that knowing ourselves and being connected to that true radiance. And it's so obvious when you realize it. That it's almost just like, it's just way too obvious. Um, but it's also so beautiful how it's orchestrated as well. Cool. Amen. Did you want to give some examples of some of the things we might get into? Like some of the th common views that people have that we're going to get into deconstructing? Yeah, we can give them a bit of an overview, perhaps. So sometime within the next 10 sessions, I want to address some of the main topics. I've already asked people uh, on my platforms, if we were to do a podcast, what are some of the themes and topics they would like to see addressed? And there were a lot of similarities, like a lot of people that voted for the same type of topics, which makes sense, because we're all kind of dealing with the same thing. We're all very similar in the end. In the end, we're all the same. <laughs> it's only before the end that we're similar. And it's before the end, before the end, that we seem very different. Right. So anyway, <laughs> no, good point. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what came up a lot for people is relationships. Like how does someone establish in something along the lines of mirror state consciousness? How does someone like that interact, have relationships, communicate? Communication is an important one. How does one communicate period? Like what is communication? just really break down the roots of communication, because so many of our difficulties and oppositions come from a lack of clear, honest, respectful, universally imbued type of communication. So I think communication is a topic, relationships is a topic. People ask a lot about sexuality too, kind of as part as a subset of the relationships. Um, we can get into some, to some degree, I mean, I'm not a political person, but to some degree, we can get into some of the social kind of movements and the whole political atmosphere that is brewing on this planet right now. Nice. And it's like really amping up its sort of heat. So we can deconstruct some of those topics. Cool. Um, obviously, there will be some degree of teaching the path as I see it. And as I've worked with people, as I've distilled some of the most effective ways for people to actually access this themselves. So that rather than just talk and just demonstrate the deconstruction process, I also want to give people an opportunity to kind of do some homework or get some exercises and get some meditations um, as part of their sort of weekly routine. Shepherding consciousness, which is kind of the state of consciousness in between the person who's just waking up to their own spirituality and asking the really relevant important spiritual questions of themselves. Someone who kind of begins to pop that personhood bubble of ideas and conventional reality, and begins to deconstruct that. The path between that and a mirror state is what I call shepherding consciousness. Why? Because we kind of take on the functionality of being a shepherd, we're beginning to then be of service to others truly, because as we step outside of our own personal bubble, and we're not just throwing our altruistic ideas and thoughts and belief systems out there. 
but we're actually getting access to sort of a sense, beginning sense of universal love and compassion. And we start to see the relevance of practicing service to others in ever more pure and clean and true ways. Then our spirituality, the way that our spirituality meets the rubber of our everyday lives is in the vein of service to all, um, expanding our consciousness beyond just our personal bubble, including others, and naturally take on a more service oriented attitude. So kind of the nuances of that. Um, and leadership, which also mm -hmm. kind of gets into uh, the picture at that stage, the nature of leadership, and different ways to be a leader, I suppose. Um, teaching, teaching, learning, learning, teaching, how to most effectively learn, how to most effectively teach. We can discuss some of those topics. Uh, we can de deconstruct uh, a little bit more on the scientific approach, um, like science, and the scientific approach, what is that really? And because at the heart of it, I believe that the sage or the mirror, if you will, is the truest scientist in a way that they have truly applied the scientific approach. What defines a scientific approach? If you take that all the way, which I believe a lot of Western scientists don't actually do, they don't take it all the way. They're all living within a similar assumption. Inside of that assumption, which is not scientifically investigated, they then apply scientific approaches to things. But the core assumption mm of perception itself is not addressed in a scientific approach. And I've always tried for my uh, philosophy or spiritual instructions to be as scientific in their approach as possible. Now I've shared a lot about concepts that to many people seem very unscientific and out there. Um, but at the core of it, the approach to spirituality, the approach to self realization, is actually very scientific. It's actually very experientially scientific, and it tries to be as objective and unbiased as it possibly can. And again, all of these topics come back to bias versus becoming more unbiased. And so we'll deconstruct some of these topics and hopefully take people into a more unbiased perspective view and a greater ability to tap into that unbiased state, which is the free state, and it's the intelligent state, and it's the balanced state, and it's everything we want it's available beyond our biases. So really, the whole thing is about becoming unbiased nice. and deconstructing our illusions. Identification with the body and the fear of death that results from that, like what is the fear of death? Um, what is death in my view? Does it even exist? Um, we can also address some of the light versus dark kind of topics, like service mm -hmm. to others versus people or entities that are really service to self oriented, like kind of to their core, if you will, and how to deal with exposure to these types of beings or, or people, when we are on this path of wanting to be as light and loving as we can. Um, yeah, any other thoughts? These are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's so much in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, parenting. Uh, daily routine, health, healing was another mm. one that came up a lot for people. Like, what's the nature of healing, how to heal, uh, what's possible with healing and all that. So I'd like to address that topic and also deconstruct some of the ideas around the healing. Mm. Again, why do we deconstruct a topic? Why is that such an emphasis? Because it's in many ways the quickest approach to get to the most original perspective of that topic because we have ideas about a topic, and they stand in the way of true understanding. We may think we know something, but as soon as I know what this object means or is, all I'm seeing is the meaning I've given it. I've given it. I no longer see the object as it actually is. There's a saying, I forgot who said it, but something like, when you, um, as soon as you teach a child that a bird is a bird, it will never experience the bird again. Mm -hmm. It will only see the label bird. Mm -hmm. And we've done this from early, early childhood, we've been conditioned in this way. And we've just compounded, compounded, added layers and layers of definition and associations and meaning. When we deconstruct that, 
it's a bit of an awkward process with some topics for some people, especially when we're emotionally invested and our identity is invested in that particular topic, let's say relationships. But once we deconstruct those ideas and start to see scientifically, start to see the truth experientially of what that topic really is in its own right, without our biases or with as little biases and distortions of our mind as possible, then we begin to naturally be able to address and approach and respond to that topic in our lives. So to deconstruct a topic is to allow the true topic to shine forth. A true understanding is absolutely opposed and negated by our biases and our meanings and our definitions. So we need to undefine something to get to really know it. And this requires some manner of attention span, some degree of attention span and sincere interest. So we'll also be deconstructing and showing and exposing how we really have a lack of attention span and how we really Typically, a lot of people have a lack of sincerity when it comes to knowing a topic. They, they're just throwing their ideas on top of it. They're just projecting their thoughts of it. And therefore, we're creating all this energetic warfare, all this psychological warfare, this emotional warfare, with all these topics, and we're living in this bubble of our own imagination and our own definitions. And I'm claiming that our natural state is the mirror state, our natural state is the God state, our natural state is the universal consciousness state. So if, if we can get as close as that state as we possibly can, by making ourselves as transparent, and as empty and as humbled and as pure, and therefore as powerful as we possibly can be, then this state's intelligence will naturally begin to operate through our bodies and our minds and our speech, as if we're not even doing it. It'll just be available, like suddenly there's this library of wisdom, instantly available to us without our knowledge. Uh, kind of like athletes experience when they're in a flow state, mm -hmm. or some people experience when they're on psychedelics, or, but I'm saying on an everyday, you can just wake up on an ordinary nine to five job day, and you can have access to this state of consciousness and this type of skillfulness and intelligence and spontaneity and ref the refresh rate of your life can be much higher the aliveness of your life can be much higher. And with that, the intelligence and the balance with which you truly understand and respect topics and people and objects and events and all that. And it's the only state from which we're going to be able to make a difference and come together and find the true solutions, allow the true solutions to manifest through that state of consciousness. Why would you say it's the only state where we can truly make a difference? Because every other state is a projection of our own bias and beliefs. And this has just never worked. Like the history books are full of people projecting their bias and beliefs onto others, onto the state of the world. And that no matter how good of a person we think we are, no matter how hard we're trying to help, um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we might think of ourselves as a really good person that wants the best for everybody. But we have to deconstruct that and become truly humble with our own thought process, truly clear on it, so that we can get beyond it and and relate to the topics that we're so passionate about from a completely new open space where there is a natural intelligence available that's not of the physical mind it transcends the physical mind it transcends the physical body call it god call it source call it intelligence and we as expressions of that have complete access to that but we've covered it with blankets and blankets and blankets and we become heavier and heavier and heavier with personhood with identification with the body, the mind, the thoughts, the ideas, the beliefs, the oppositional concepts, and so forth. Clearly, it's never worked in human history. Just open history books. Open the human history books and compare it to the way that the flowers live together with the bears and the antelope and the lions and the trees. And compare that. It's a complete bloodbath. It's a complete self-destructive society that we've cultivated for thousands of years. Uh, of course, not all people engage with that, but there's big, big examples of, mm -hmm. of the expressions of our biases. So it's absolutely crucial if we want to save our civilization from its own self-destructive addiction, from its own insistence upon what it believes is true. It's absolutely crucial we get to a place of unbiased consciousness. So that the natural intelligence, which moves the flower, which moves the antelope, which moves the trees, which moves the wind, can also move us as part of nature equal to everything else. So that what comes through us 
comes is rooted in not just personal thoughts, but in an intelligence that's deeply intuitive, heartfelt, conscious, clear, awake, vibrant, refreshed every nanosecond, fresh, 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 spontaneous, therefore always clear and unbiased. And from that, I have found in my own personal experience that the solutions are always available and that the most balanced view of any situation, no matter how many people are involved, no matter how many complex layers of accusations and this and that are involved, the true understanding is always available if you're willing to dig beyond the biases. Now, there's not much you can do as a single individual um, if other people do not accept that type of consciousness within themselves, if they insist upon their bias and their beliefs, then you can be as clear as you want. And you can offer that vibration, which will help and can make magical changes in the people around you just by having a different vibration about you, a different state of consciousness emanate from you. And oftentimes it does create miracles. But at the end of the day, free will is king. So people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for themselves need to realize the benefit of this empty space of consciousness, of this um, unbiased state of living, this free, happy state of living. And ironically, it contains the happiness they seek. And they think they're finding it by being insistent upon what they believe. If you investigate that belief, you deconstruct it, and you end up in that unbiased place, you're happy. And this happiness is intelligent. Sometimes I say, if you're not happy, you're not helping. But people think they're helping. But in the process, they're so unhappy. But they still think they're helping because their beliefs are right. So we've got to get out of this whole cycle of right and wrong, good versus bad, this versus that, you versus me. We've got to get to this undifferentiated universal state of unbiased, free, loving consciousness and allow it to manifest mm -hmm. through us naturally, spontaneously, at a much higher refresh rate, much higher frequency than we have to this point. We got to get out of our own ways. Mm -hmm. And then the planet will very quickly restore itself. Humanity will very quickly balance itself out. But we need enough people that devote themselves to this understanding that are willing to sacrifice their own biases for the sake of the benefit of all. And first of all, the benefit of themselves, the happiness they seek. And it's easy once you see that your path is not leading you to happiness, it's not leading you to the solutions that you think you want are all about. That's one of the things we want to demonstrate, or I want to demonstrate through the podcast, which I'm not as focused on in my teachings. This is a more a dialogue from the state of consciousness, with sort of, again, the spiritual rubber meeting the road of conventional matrix reality. Mm -hmm. How does that interact? What would the mirror state suggest? when it meets these worldly topics. That's kind of the meat of this, um, of this uh, platform. Cool. Well, thank you guys. This thank was you. a lovely first, thank you. Uh, first episode. <laughs> nice to be here with you. And uh, thank you for tuning in. I would like to give you some homework to try out. Again, because what's important is for this to become experiential, not conceptual. So I think a good place to start is just to ask yourself how open you are to a different view, knowing that it's not about jumping from one view to another view, because that's what we've been doing for millennia, and it hasn't been the solution to human suffering. But rather, if you're open to another view, then you can listen to a mere consciousness uh, type of dialogue or reflection, and you can get an intuitive access to the skillfulness that I'm trying to promote here, that I'm trying to encourage. So just for this week until the next episode, ask yourself every day, in sort of a meditated, relaxed state of mind, how willing am I to look at my own beliefs, at my own conditioning, and become, as Kelly said beautifully, to unbecome those things, in order to reveal to myself to discover experientially deep within my own consciousness, my own potential, what is possible? And am I open to that possibility? Am I desirous of that possibility? Any answer is fine. If the answer is no, if the answer is maybe if the answer is fuck yes, 
that's all great. I still encourage you to, if there was any resonance here, I still encourage you, like Corey said, to just go through some of these sessions, just have some patience with yourself in understanding this, have some patience with us demonstrating it. And um, I think for most of you, it will at some point, find a place in your attitude in your approach to life. And I think it will greatly benefit you right from the start. Um, but there's got to be some openness. So ask yourself, how willing am I to rediscover myself from scratch, to reinvent myself from scratch, to re know myself, to truly know myself beyond what anyone else has ever told me, also beyond what we are telling you, because these are just methods to assist you in getting to a place where you're free of whatever anyone's ever told you about yourself, including us. And um, how, how exciting is that to you? Do you feel any sense of excitement? Do you feel any ounce of excitement for that journey to rediscover yourself to truly know yourself at a much deeper level? beyond what anyone's ever conditioned you to think. Just consider that in sort of an open space of mind, and allow for whatever response, whether it's resistance, whether it's fuck yes, to just arise and accept it as it is, there's no need to change it. It's just a question to get clear on where you're resistant to it, and why perhaps you can ask them to. And uh, like, what do I have to lose? What, what am I afraid of losing in this process of deconstructing my beliefs and biases? Or am I actually quite excited about the potential? And um, I just hope to convey to you that this is a possibility, and that it's worth your while, and that it would benefit humanity at large, if more people approached it in this way, and discovered this type of um, understanding of life. That's my only intention, take it or leave it. And um, I love you. And uh, until next time. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Mirror Talks podcast with Bentinho Massaro. If you love these teachings and you want full access to almost all of Bentinho's recorded material, go to bentinhomassaro.tv. Right now, we're offering a free seven-day trial with unlimited access to everything on bentinhomassaro.tv, including curated playlists, guided meditations, and much more. This is our number one recommendation for you. As a subscriber, you'll get first access to these podcast episodes two weeks before they go public. You'll also get access to exclusive Q&As with Bentinho and other content only available to subscribers of BentinhoMassaro.tv. Also, Bentinho recently created a free online global enlightenment retreat. It's eight long-form sessions that coherently guide you through the foundation of his enlightenment teachings. You can watch the free online global enlightenment retreat at BentinhoMassaro.tv or on YouTube. If you're interested in the most current and complete overview of Bentinho's work to date, this is where we recommend you start. Another great resource is Trinfinity Academy, Bentinho's free online school for enlightenment, empowerment, and infinity. Each class is concise and clear and distills one key topic at a time, including homework. We strongly recommend you check out Trinfinity Academy if you want to master the mechanics of Bentinho's teachings. Finally, don't underestimate the value of sharing this episode with the people who came to mind as you were watching or listening. It's a service to them and the collective, and it's also the best thing you can do to support us in getting this message far and wide. We also encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave positive reviews and ratings on your preferred platforms, and follow Bentinho on social media, especially Instagram. Thank you 